Today we're going to learn how to name and write formulas for type 1 and type 2 compounds. On the screen there we have a model and also a crystal of sodium chloride, an ionic compound, and it's a type 1 compound. Well first we want to talk about what are binary compounds. Bi we know means two. And so it is a chemical compound that contains exactly two different elements, and these are bonded together. Type 1 and type 2 compounds, and there's also a type 3, we'll do that in another video, but type 1 and type 2 compounds generally have a metal and a non-metal. But specifically, they also have a positive cation and a negative anion. Metals will always have positive charges when they're in compounds. It's important if you want to pull out your periodic table, probably want to write some notes on it, but one thing you definitely want to recognize in the periodic table is where are the metals, where are the non-metals. So if you see all the red elements, these are all your metals. So most elements on the periodic table are metals. There's only a few non-metals up here we see. These are a few non-metals. So if you have a metal written first, it's going to be a type 1 or type 2 compound. It's going to be named with the system we're going to talk about today. Another thing you want to be aware of are what are binary compounds. I'm going to go through some examples right now. So we have CaCl2. That's called calcium chloride. Don't worry about writing out the names of these. We're going to learn how to do that in the video. I'm just going to go through them. Uh, NAF, sodium fluoride, two different elements. PdO2, this is lead 4 oxide, two different elements. And MgO, magnesium oxide, two different elements. And then we have H2O, we'll just call that water, two different elements. And then we have SF6, sulfur hexafluoride, two different elements. Now actually in this category, we're going to learn today how to name the top four. Because all these in the top four contain a metal and a non-metal. So the first one is a, the metal calcium, and then the metal sodium, and the metal lead, and the metal magnesium. Now the only thing that's different here is you, you may have noticed I used a Roman numeral with a lead. That's because lead has multiple charges. So this is, all the other three are type 1 compounds. This one is a type 2. So that's a type 2 compound because it has multiple charges. And then all these other ones are type 1. So there's a type 1, and this is a type 1. And this is a type 1. Now the last two elements, or compounds listed there, are actually type 3 compounds. Because the first element is not a metal. That's a non-metal. So hydrogen is a non-metal. Sulfur is a non-metal. We're going to learn how to name those in the other video. One thing you want to know, and you should be aware of and memorize, are these charges on the periodic table. Now the charges of everything in family 1A is going to be plus 1. So we see all these, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, all plus one. Next one, family 2A, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, all these are plus two. And over here we have aluminum plus three. So memorize those charges. Now noble gases are not listed at all because they have zero charge and are typically not involved in ionic bonding, so the charge is not important. Now we see fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are all minus one. Oxygen, all those are minus two. Nitrogen is minus 3. Now one thing that's a little bit different, you see hydrogen is plus 1 and minus 1. Hydrogen is almost always plus 1. Now the only time hydrogen will be minus 1 is when it's with a metal in a compound. So if you ever see hydrogen with a metal, the metal is going to be the positive, the cation, and hydrogen will be negative in that situation. So let's look at some type 1 compounds. So we have NaCl, that's a type 1 compound, and we have K2SO4. They're type 1 compounds because a metal, which is written first, only has one charge. So the, in, in, in ACL, you name the metal first, and then you name the non-metal second, and that ends in an ide ending. So we don't say sodium chlorine, we say sodium chloride. Let's do the next one. You name the metal first, which is potassium, then name the polyatomic ion second. Now you need to get familiar with those polyatomic ions, so we'll say that is potassium and then sulfate. Excellent. You want to be aware the polyatomic ions are a group of atoms that together have a charge. Most of them are negative, and you're going to treat them the same as you do an atom, so those polyatomic ions stick together. Anytime you have more than one polyatomic ion, you should put it in parentheses to show how many you have. Type 2 compounds is what we're going to work on next. Type 2 compounds are the metals that have more than one charge. And so with all these metals, we'll need a Roman numeral to, sh to show which charge we're talking about. So we have iron 2 and iron 3. So there's iron 2 and iron 3, copper 1 and copper 2, cobalt 2 and cobalt 3, 
10, 2, and 10, 4, lead 2 and lead 4, and then mercury 1 and mercury 2. Now, mercury is a little bit different. Mercury 2 is the same, but mercury 1 is actually a polyatomic ion. It's two mercury atoms bonded together, and together they have a plus 2 charge. Now, even though it's plus 2, we call it, min we call it mercury 1. Why do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to distinguish from mercury 2, which is a single atom of mercury with a plus 2 charge. And another way to look at that is if you look at each of those, those atoms individually, they may be plus 1 charge. So how do you name these type 1 compounds? What I did is this is actually the background of an iron solution, and there's two different types of irons. There's FeCl2 and FeCl3. So we have to distinguish between those two and we name them. Same system here, we name the metal first, but this time we're going to include a Roman numeral, and then we name the non-metal second at uh, ending in I. So what we actually have to do here is work backwards. So we see there's two chlorines, and if you looked at your charges or maybe even already memorized those, both chlorine, the chlorine is minus one. That's the only charge it's going to have. Now the iron has to equal the negative charge on that side, and there's only one iron. So if the chlorine side is negative two, the iron side has got to be a positive two. And so we, want to, so we want to include that positive 2 in the name. So for this, we would say iron 2 chloride, iron Roman numeral 2 chloride. Now let's look at the one uh, FeCl3. Same system, name the metal first, ending with the Roman numeral, and the nonmetal second, ending in I. So we want to work backwards. We have three chlorines. Let's, let's get to work here. So we have a chlorine that's minus 1. We have another chlorine that's minus one, and we have another chlorine that's minus one. So if add up those three minus ones together, it's got to be minus three. The non-metal side is minus three. The metal side has to be a positive three to equal that out. So that's going to be Fe with a positive three on this side. So Fe uh, three plus. And to denote that in the name, we'll say iron three chloride. So that's iron three chloride. Let's keep going. Remember these charges on the periodic table, they're going to be important in naming. Now let's do a little practice with naming type 1 and type 2 compounds, and I've mixed them up in this category. I've got MgCl2, Ca3P2, Ca3 parentheses PO42. Now notice here I have more than one polyatomic ion. The rule, anytime you have more than one polyatomic ion, it should be placed in parentheses. Next, we have Al, parentheses, NO3, the polyatomic ion, 3, and then we have Cu2O, and then simply CuO. So how do you name these? The first one should be fairly straightforward. You name the metal, then the non-metal, and then you add the ending ion, so magnesium chloride. The second one, very similar to that. You name the Ca, which is calcium, and then you don't say calcium phosphorus, you can say calcium phosphide. Next one, Ca3PO42. Now, so that's similar, and the one reason I put that is because sometimes people will mix up a polyatomic ion with the element. That's calcium, not phosphide, but calcium phosphate. Number four is also a polyatomic ion. So it's aluminum. Aluminum only has one charge. So no Roman numerals needed. So it's aluminum nitrate. Now, five and six are going to be a little bit more work. Now, one, two, three, and four are all type one compounds. Only have The metal only has one charge. T number five and number six are both type two compounds. The metal, copper, specifically has multiple charges. So we have to work and figure out what that charge is. So we know oxygen only has a negative two charge. So let's write that down. You've got an oxygen that's got a minus two charge. And the positive side has to equal that. But So we have a copper that is plus one. And then we have another copper that has got to be plus one. Now, why are these coppers plus one? Because if I add plus one and plus one, I've got plus two, and plus two is equal to a magnitude, the opposite in sign to the negative two. So we have to have a neutral charge altogether. So to name this, we want to, we want to show that it is a plus one copper. So we say copper one oxide. Let's work on naming the second one. So in this one, we once again have an oxygen that's minus two. So there's an oxygen that's minus two. And then we have a copper, but there's only one copper this time. And so this one copper has got to be plus two. Now let's separate these. These are completely different compounds. Don't get confused these. So we have, here we have a copper with a Roman with Roman numeral two, and then oxygen or oxide. So we say copper two oxide. Good job.
So far what we've done is we've gone from a formula to a name. The last thing we want to work on is going from a name to a formula. We want to make sure those positive and negatives equal up. So uh, the steps are this. When you do this, you always uh, want to go write the cation first with a positive charge and then write the anion with a negative charge. Cross over the charges, use parentheses if necessary anytime you have more than one polyatomic ion. And then cancel the subscripts that they match. So let's go through and do some examples. Uh, when you do this, the whole point is to ensure that you have a neutral compound. So the first one, sodium chloride. Now this one you may not have to do because you know that sodium is plus one. You know chlorine is minus one. Anytime they match up, you can just write NaCl and boom, you're done. But if you want to go through the steps, we can do that. Uh, calcium chloride will be the second one. We're going to do calcium phosphide, sodium sulfate, calcium sulfate, aluminum nitrate, and lastly, ammonium phosphate. Let's, so let's start with cal uh, like the sodium chloride. Remember we said they're match up, so all you have to do is write NaCl. But if you want to go through the steps, this is how they work. You cross over the charges, they match, and boom, you're done. Now calcium chloride is going to be a little bit more work because we see calcium it's actually not plus one, but it's plus two. And chloride's minus one. So that means we need more negatives. How many more negatives do you think we need? How many chlorines do you think we need? We actually need two. So that positive two on calcium, that tells us we need two chlorines. So you write it this way. So we say Ca2, cross over that charge, and then and the one just tells us we need one calcium. Boom, we're done. So the final formula is going to be CaCl2. CaCl2 right there. Next one. Calcium phosphate. Now this one's, we've got a calcium once again that's plus two. And a phosphite, remember that's phosphorus, is minus three. Oops, minus three. Let me to that. The number that both these go into is six. So that means we need three calciums and two phosphates. So the way to visualize it is cross over the charges. We write Ca3P2. You know, so far we have not done any polyatomic ions, but with number four, boom, we're going to start doing a polyatomic ion. So let's do uh, sodium sulfate. So let's look at sodium. Sodium is a plus one charge, and sulfate is a minus two charge. So you should recognize there that you need more positives, so you're going to need two sodiums to match up with that one negative two sulfate. So sodium is plus one, sulfate is minus two. You cross over those charges, Na2SO4. And boom, you're done. And I'm not sure right here, I think I left off the ne negative 2 on the sulfate, so sorry about that. Well, let's at, look at calcium sulfate. Now, calcium is in family 2A, so calcium is actually plus 2. Now, sulfate is still minus 2. Now, this is the easiest case scenario. If they match up, we just write calcium Ca, sulfate SO4, boom, you're done. So this one's going to be Ca, SO4, boom, you're done. Now, let's do the last two. Aluminum nitrate. Aluminum nitrate. Aluminum is a metal that's only plus three, the only charge it ever has. Aluminum nitrate. And then nitrate's a polyatomic ion. So aluminum is plus three. Nitrate is minus one. So that should tell you immediately you need three nitrates. You need three polyatomic ions. Now let me say that. I said three polyatomic ions. That should make you think parentheses. So how does that work? So you cross over, you say aluminum, three nitrates. Boom, you're done. Now, there's two different threes here. There's one three in the oxygen because there's three, there's three oxygens in one polyatomic ion. But there's three nitrates in the compound. So if you look at this all together, there's a one aluminum, three nitrogens, and nine oxygens in one of the smallest, what we call formula units of this compound. Last one of the day. Ammonium phosphate. Ammonium is plus one. Phosphate is minus three. So this tells us we need more of the first polyatomic ion, which is ammonium. Now, don't get ammonium mixed up with aluminum. Ammonium is a polyatomic ion. And we only need one phosphate. So the way you'd work these is cross over the negative, the one from the ammonium, the three from the phosphate, and tells us we have parentheses, NH4, into parentheses, three, PO4. Boom, you're done. That's our first lesson on naming type 1 and type 2 compounds. Come in tomorrow with questions. If you have any, we're going to work on a lot of these. Have There's Wrigley Field.